Hi, welcome back to Generation SUNY. We're here at the College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering at the University of Albany with Dr. Sarah Brenner, Assistant VP of Nano Health Initiatives. Now, Dr. Brenner, what role can SUNY play with, new, with health affairs in New York State? You bet. Well, as you know, SUNY is in a great position. Uh, we're already recognized internationally as a leader for education, obviously, uh, but also for innovation and technology advancement and economic outreach to all different sorts of stakeholders in academia, in government, and in industry throughout upstate and downstate New York. All right. Now, what role can research and innovation play, especially with nanotechnology? Sure. Uh, nanotechnology is a tremendous platform um, that holds revolutionary potential for advancement in a variety of industries. Healthcare is one of those um, that is becoming more and more relevant uh, today. Here at the College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering, we're working on developing interventions uh, for medical treatments and diagnoses and screening plans, uh, modalities, that will intersect the healthcare system at sort of three distinct phases. Um, the first would be in prevention. I'm a preventive medicine physician with a background in uh, public health and internal medicine, so naturally my thoughts gravitate towards how can we keep healthy people well? How can we extend the period of life where they're disease-free and completely functional? So nanotechnologies, first and foremost, um, target that phase of people's lives to keep them healthy, to keep them functional, and to identify anything that goes up wrong very early on in the process of a disease or an illness or an injury. The second intersection point would be with diagnostics. So how do we screen for disease very early? How do we catch it early? And how can that information help a physician come up with a treatment plan that's targeted and tailored right away? Um, so developing sensors or monitoring systems, for example, will allow physicians and patients to appropriately and in a timely fashion address anything that's gone wrong. One example of that is in diabetes care. More and more people in the U.S. today are diagnosed with diabetes and need to manage that disease over the course of their life. Right now, one thing they do is monitor blood glucose levels. That often requires a blood stick or another procedure that's very uncomfortable and inconvenient for a patient. So by bringing nanotechnology to the table, what we can do is develop a lab on a chip, for example, or another less invasive, meaning less painful, um, way to gather information about their blood glucose level. In that way, we get real-time feedback, we get accurate information, and we can monitor and tailor the drug therapy or the lifestyle change or whatever's needed so that that person can be as healthy as possible. Uh, the other way, third intersection point with healthcare, is in treatment. So no matter how wonderful our preventive and early diagnostic strategies are, people will still get sick uh, one time or another in their life. So how can we target and develop medical therapies that are as uh, effective and um, appropriate as possible as early on in the disease process? One example of medical interventions is in the case of cancer. So. Um, Everybody has been affected by cancer in one way or another, either directly or indirectly. Um, our current treatments for cancer are pretty darn tough to take. Current treatments include things like chemotherapy, like radiation therapy, or like surgeries. Those sorts of interventions kill healthy tissue as well as the cancerous tissue. So patients have side effects such as nausea, vomiting, hair loss, they're prone to infectious diseases, they have to recover from a surgery. Uh, what we'd like to be able to do is target the cancer cells while leaving the, the healthy tissue completely uh, free. So in developing different sorts of um, drug therapies, for example, nanotechnology has been used to intelligently engineer drugs that can seek out and attack cancer cells and kill them while not attacking healthy cells. In that way, um, a tumor, for example, could be shrunk and or eliminated without the need for surgery, without the need for radiation therapy, and while help, helping to keep the patient completely well and free of side effects. Those sorts of technologies um, would be revolutionary in terms of improving the quality of people's life. 
Um, so SUNY's role in all of that and bringing that into the real world, which sounds sort of science fiction, but it's very much happening out there, are educating the next generation of physicians, the next generation of researchers and clinical scientists who are brought up in an interdisciplinary network of uh, intellectual researchers and industry partners and other stakeholders um, so that they can really drive forward from bench top to bedside 21st century medical applications of nanotechnology. Wow, these are all really great initiatives, Dr. Brenner. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to meeting with us and sure. doing this interview. But tune in next time to Generation SUNY when we discuss our final conversation. Thank you.